Luck, it's something we all want. Sometimes it's good, other times it can be bad. Is there anything we can do to improve our luck? Can talismans and charms make us have less bad luck and more good luck? In this video, we take a look at the charm of Cheltenham and ask if this and other trinkets of good fortune can really make a difference. And stick around to the end of the video to find out how you can become luckier. Welcome to IF, videos on mystery and history. Hit that subscribe button and ring that bell to never miss a video again. So what is this charm of Cheltenham? This lucky object appeared in a recent article published on the website Haunted Ohio. The charm has a long history, first being used as a mascot for a squadron of World War I pilots. In those first days of flight, things were very dangerous. If you weren't killed in training, you surely would be the moment you flew your first combat mission. This led to the creation of many superstitions and a reliance on good old fashioned luck to survive. This is where the little guy, Scott Jock, enters the picture. Dr. A. Cosgrove George sent the lucky charm to a young RAF pilot after he had received a letter asking for his help. It read, Sir, a little over five months ago, a friend of mine, who is an OTC, wrote to me enclosing a letter from his particular school chum, who was being trained as a pilot in the RAF. My friend's object in writing was to beg for my assistance on behalf of his friend in the RAF. The latter, when just on the point of obtaining his wings, had crashed badly two or three times in succession, with the result that he had completely lost his nerve and was in the very depths of despair, for it meant that all hope of obtaining his pilot certificate had gone. In his trouble, he had written to his old school friend and the latter in turn wrote me, begging for my prompt assistance, be it occult or otherwise. This was the start of Scotch Jock's journey. Having been a lucky charm carried for a few years in the man's waistcoat, it was now being wrapped up and sent to a new life in the air service. Scotch Jock did come with some basic instructions for the pilot to follow. One, it was to be worn night and day without fail. Two, it was never to be touched by anyone but the wearer. These instructions would guarantee that the pilot would regain his confidence and, as an added bonus, he and any plane he flew in would also be protected from misfortune. Reports from the base say that the pilot did indeed regain his nerve and also went on to become a night observer whom would run multiple bombing runs over France, surviving the war unscathed. The RAF man wrote the doctor thanking him for the object of his good fortune. This letter says, Dear Doctor, I have not forgotten that you said you would be interested to hear from me. You will remember that five months ago you gave me a little charm after my crash and temporary loss of nerve, which AP told you of. I have worn your charm religiously and though of course I cannot say how far that is instrumental, it is certainly true that I seem to have been especially protected. Only a week ago, I was crashed badly by my pilot through the engine cutting out in the air. We came down on a sunken road and wrecked the machine absolutely. If we had not been quick to put out the first flames, we should have been on fire very soon and we were carrying 350 pounds of high explosive in the shape of bombs. The crash was sufficient to kill us and it is marvelous that the bombs did not explode, for they were knocked clean off the racks which crashed into the embankment. Yet I escaped without a scratch and the pilot almost as easily. Apart from that, five times our engine has failed, each time by that untraced causation which is called luck. It has been on the side of the lines 
otherwise I should have been a prisoner or worse. And each time we have managed to make a safe landing, which in unknown country at night is nothing short of wonderful. So whatever may be the truth of things, I am certainly happy in my horoscope. I thought I would let you know this. I shall be coming to England in a month to have another try for my pilot's wings. I shall have as much need then your charm. Gratefully yours a lieutenant in the RAF. From this letter it would seem that the pilot did have a share of bad luck, crashing his aircraft numerous times. This could however be seen as good luck. After all he did survive each time and during a war I think a large number of planes would be lost and the pilots too. So can we influence our luck? Are there ways to swing events in our favor? From the great feeling you get when finding money on the street, we all have days when we seem luckier than on others. Is this luck some kind of mysterious supernatural force guiding us through life, rewarding our good deeds or can we just thank ourselves for being a little more observant on a certain day? Researching luck has been the focus of many over the years. The many attempts to decode the secrets of good fortune uncovering some interesting facts. This research found that what a person might perceive as luck has more to do with psychology than probability. Luck is actually just our own positive attitude. This attitude keeps us open to new opportunities or perceiving patterns in random acts of chance. Let's take a look at some of this research and its findings and see if we can uncover a pattern that could make us luckier. First are those people we all know, those that seem to be blessed, the lucky people. Richard Wiseman, what a great name for a professor, has carried out a number of studies trying to figure out how we can separate the qualities of a lucky person from those of the unlucky. In one such study he divided a group into those that thought themselves lucky and unlucky. They then read a newspaper. On one page of a newspaper he penned in large letters, tell the experimenter you have seen this and win 250 pounds. The group that identified as lucky were more likely to see the ad whereas the unlucky people demonstrated more anxiety. This anxiety made the group less observant. He created the four principles of luck which can be found on his website. So with these luck hacks could we make games of chance work to our benefit? If we take the simple coin toss and say that we have just flipped heads four times in a row, the logical next flip would be a tail. Well this is wrong, it's a cognitive bias. The odds of flipping heads or tails are still 50-50. This form of thinking has a name, it is known as gambler's fallacy. The cause of this way of thinking is to do with the brain and its pattern seeking behavior. Our brains evolved to seek these patterns. This once helped us spot predators and see the migratory patterns of our prey. Today these abilities are used to entertain, gambling and gaming trigger the brain. This explanation helps us to wrap our heads around the odd bit of luck. Winning at a game or hitting it big on the lottery, but what about those that hit a roll? Do lucky streaks fit with the same models? What's the secret to hitting a winning streak? When placing bets in games like craps or roulette, your betting shifts your odds. A person who wins two bets in a row has a 57% chance of winning the next one, but a person who has lost two bets in a row only has a 40% chance of winning. Why? Well, according to a study published last year, people again fear that their bets will regress to the mean, that if they won they are more likely to lose the next time, so they compensate for it by making safer bets. I guess we can always rely on good old superstition to help us out. Crossing your fingers, knocking on wood, charms and amulets just like Scott's jock from the start of the video. Several studies have shown that superstitions might work, although not in the way you may think. Researchers have hypothesized 
that the people who use Lucky Charms tend to persist at the problem longer, saying they felt more effective, almost as if they had assistance from some other power. People feel empowered when they think that something else is helping them, so they actually do better at the task in hand. So if you want to get lucky, find yourself a lucky charm. Do you have a lucky charm? Are you a lucky person? Maybe I will get lucky and have you join the channel or hit that like button. What's the luckiest thing that has happened to you? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoy what we do here on the channel, please hit that subscribe button, like and share. You can find us across social media by searching We Are If. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.